I want to address this environment of hostility and the state of our country that we're currently in and give you some things to consider when you move forward in your preparedness as you get ready for things to escalate to be more dangerous come November. And as we've just seen with this failed assassination attempt of Donald Trump, in my opinion, things are only going to get worse. This is not a unifying event. This is very likely to be a more divisive event. And as we have this conversation and I share some of these concepts with you that I think are very important to remember as we move forward through this unknown territory we're currently in, I will be showing some B-roll of what occurred and giving you some video footage and some audio of what some of the witnesses might have experienced and everything else that might have happened during this time. And we'll discuss things about the possible reasons for why this was allowed to happen. We'll discuss how someone could be pushed to do something along those lines. And we'll also talk about the fact that this was a very miraculous situation considering the fact that Donald Trump survived. And we'll talk about the person involved a little bit, but not to give them any credit, just to give you some things to consider when it comes to your own personal security. So, before we get started, I will mention that Midway USA is the biggest supporter of the channel, a very American company. I very much appreciate them supporting what I do here. And of course, if you need anything to get better prepared, make sure you check out Midway USA. And I am wearing my best fed attire since that's what I'm considered to be. And because some of these talking points are going to be brought to you by logic rather than proverbial rabbit holes, whether or not that's of conspiracy or denial, well, I'm sure there will be accusations. And of course, I have my trusty SIG P229 Chamberton 357 SIG, which used to be the Secret Service pistol. So, moving on. What just happened was a tragedy, and it's very indicative of the current state of our country, which should have you concerned, because this is a byproduct of societal decay, and it represents a failing system that we're currently all living through. So, it's important to at least consider the fact that this is... Something that was created, but not necessarily with purpose. So what do I mean by this? Okay, first off, the security situation was questionable to say the least. We noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And... Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots right now. You know, that's a little bit of And obviously, a lot of people are running wild with rumors of, was this allowed to happen? Was this planned by the deep state? Was this created by those who pull the strings, right, in order to avoid another Donald Trump administration? Whatever it might be, right? But here's the things to really consider and where we can use Oakham's razor to try to base our assumptions on the most likely outcome and then move forward in our preparedness from there understanding what we're really dealing with right now, right? So the most likely situation that occurred there is that they were denied the resources required to be at the level of security that they needed to be in order to appropriately protect the presidential candidate who also happened to be a former president. Okay, they asked for more resources. They were denied. Those requests were not granted. And we can 
maybe see the fallout of not having the resources required to have appropriate security. Lack of competency comes to mind as well. There was a lot of incompetence on display during that situation. Now, I'm not an expert in law enforcement, and I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend like I could have done better than anyone who's professionally trained to do so. But we do know that through DEI initiatives and other courses of action within these agencies that there's a good possibility some of the quality of protection has gone down over the years. And some of that was on display during this event. Especially when you watch some of the body language of some of the teams involved with eliminating the threat. Now, that's just at least my opinion and that's based on some further research that I've done, but this conversation is to try to help us all develop a better understanding of what's really going on and to be mentally prepared for what to expect here in the future, right? So rather than jumping down the conspiracy rabbit hole, if we can just assume that resources that were required, which were actually denied by those who were able to make that request, um, weren't available, so therefore these security risks were heightened, and that the competency of those who were involved with the security wasn't at a level required to actually be able to react appropriately, an opportunity arose for somebody to take action. So that'd be the most logical reason for why this was allowed to happen. And this person was only staged 130 yards away from their target. And I know not everyone maybe shoots as often as I do and maybe doesn't have as much experience with firearms, but 130 yards is not far away at all, especially with a rifle. In fact, just last night, my friend and I were at 100 yards shooting my full-size IPSC target you see here behind me with handguns from the draw and hitting our target. So the fact that Donald Trump was missed is actually a miracle in many ways. Now, because he was missed, people are assuming that this is staged or a hoax or some kind of publicity stunt, which is also ridiculous. Logically, like I said, we're going to try to use that today, and we should use that when we're being practical about our preparedness, right? Because there are plenty of pieces being put into place right now for you to jump into whatever strange camp you want to be part of, thanks to years and years and years of information being dispersed in the way that it has been. People think this could be a hoax, and that's also illogical. People lost their lives. And the president was visibly, well, former president, was visibly injured on live TV. So logically, let's assume it's not a hoax, okay? Let's assume it's not a publicity stunt, which I personally believe it was not. This was very miraculous that he did not get hit by that round or the subsequent rounds thereafter. And for the people who are saying, well, I know what gunshots sound like and doesn't sound like popcorn, that's for sure. Um, have you ever had rounds fly over your head? Because it sounds like popcorn. And I haven't been in combat or ever had someone shoot at me. But let's just say it wouldn't be the most far-fetched thing for you to be emulating what you might have seen in a Grand Thumb video and had rounds shot over your head to see what they sound like and realize that it's much like popcorn. Regardless... Divine intervention might have been at play. I don't know. But what I will say is that it might not have just been to save Donald Trump, which a lot of people would assume. But whatever created a scenario where he was relatively unharmed by that bullet might have saved our country in many ways. Because the fallout of that actually being successful in the sense of an assassination would have been unpredictable to the level of chaos it would have created. And I think we all just dodged a huge bullet ourselves as well. I don't know how else to say it. So whether or not it's divine intervention, whether or not it was just luck, whether or not the person involved was just bad at shooting or whatever it was, 
we all just got extremely lucky and we should be very grateful for that. Now, what about this person? Can I see, man? Like, yeah. We can see the guy there. I, th I think they hit him because the guy is, he looks dead. It's easy to jump into the conspiracy rabbit hole here and say, well, obviously, it was MK Ultra, right? Three letter agency. Asset, right? Start looking into his past. Oh, well, we might have some affiliations here with Antifa or BlackRock or whatever it might be, right? But the people who are actually complicit here, in my opinion, are the media. Why do I say that? Well, here's what you should understand as we move forward in this current hostile environment we're all living in. This person was an NPC. What does that mean? Well, in video game terminology, it would mean a non-playable character. Someone you interact with in a video game that might have some dialogue, but doesn't really do a whole lot thereafter. And somebody that you can't play as a player. They only exist as an AI within that construct, right? Well, NPCs have one fatal flaw. Everything they do, all of their reactions, all of their dialogue, and all of their actions have to be programmed. Because there's not somebody at the wheel. And that programming has to be done initially by somebody, right? And the media has done an excellent job at programming people to react viscerally to certain concepts. They've been doing it for years now, but they've really ramped it up over, I would say, the last eight or nine years to the point where people who operate daily as an NPC, and when I say that, what I mean is someone with a, a lower IQ, doesn't have the ability to critically think on their own and doesn't necessarily have what you would consider to be intellectual tendencies, those people are very susceptible to being programmed because in many ways they're already a blank slate. And the media understands this, just like marketing and ad agencies understand this. They will try to program those people to act in a certain manner in order to accomplish their goal. So if you're in marketing, your goal is to sell them a product. So those people are targeted because, well, they're likely to buy. And this person is targeted by certain forms of media, and I'm not just saying mainstream. I'm talking about social media, certain organizations that like to radicalize people, right? These are the people they target directly. And there's no longer a need for these dark government programs, these MK Ultra esque programs and initiatives to indoctrinate people to pull off crimes of this nature, that's no longer required. We're now in a scenario where all you have to do is over inundate their intellectual capacity with content that will drive them towards a certain goal. And that's what we're facing here in this country in many ways. And it affects people in all ideologies and all belief systems, right? But this person was likely more susceptible to that than others. And we've seen the same behavior with groups like ISIS. The bees really don't like me right now. I'm kind of in their flowers. ISIS, terrorist organizations, all these different entities this one's really mad, are very good at their job. And a lot of them learned their job from some of these three-letter agencies. But the direct input is no longer required. It just builds on itself at this point. And there's always more consumption to be had. So you could look at this as being some type of well-organized deep state scenario where an asset was let loose, right? But the more logical explanation is that this person was susceptible to the programming that's being put out there. And
push factors are basically what makes you vulnerable to a process of radicalization, to joining a violent extremist group. And these can be a lot of different things, but roughly a sense of alienation, a sense of isolation, questioning your own identity, but also feeling that your in-group is under attack, and your in-group might be based on a nationality or an ethnicity or a religion, and feeling that larger powers around you are doing nothing to help. So all of this comes into play, not to mention this person supposedly had bomb-making materials in their vehicle and that there was a big concern about this area where a van was parked right after the event. Lots of things were going on, lots of information is out there, and lots of possibilities exist. And by taking the most logical solution and applying it, you can avoid having to concern yourself with what happened over the next however many months and move forward with being productive in your personal preparedness and understanding that there's a likelihood more things like this will happen and that these events are being perpetrated using the tactics that we just discussed, right? And that the level of competency here in our country, not just at the level of the Secret Service or anyone else involved with the security of the event, right? But in general, when it comes to quality control at major manufacturers, when it comes to customer service at your local coffee shop, whatever it might be, I think we can all agree that the quality of competency is quite limited now within our country. And so remember that whenever you're developing an opinion about what's really going on here. Regardless of the reasons why the, these things are happening, our country just moved into a more dangerous environment and a more dangerous phase than what it was already in and already on trajectory to be. These major events are dangerous. And this type of behavior is meant to dissuade you from attending. Right? and dissuade you from being part of large organized events in public spaces. And by abiding by it, in many ways, they accomplish their mission. But at the same time, when it comes to being prepared, prioritizing your own personal safety and security is the name of the game. So as we move forward and get closer to November, take your personal protection seriously. Make your plans around the idea that more of these things are likely to occur. And do what you need to do to make sure that you have ways of taking care of yourself if you find yourself involved in an event like that. The last thing we need is civil discourse and unrest. But here we are. And it's only going to get worse. So, let's hope that things improve. Let's hope that nothing else happens. And let's hope that we can um, get this country back on the right track. But right now, this attempted assassination is extremely symbolic of where we are as a country. And that is just very upsetting.